nations grounded in dialogue, diplomacy, and the UN Charter. Also earlier this morning, the Secretary General um, laid a wreath at the memorial of our second Secretary General, Doug Hammarskjöld. He said that the ideals that drove Doug Hammarskjöld are ours to pursue, peace, justice, and shared humanity, adding that the summit of the future later this month is an opportunity to embrace the spirit of Doug Hammarskjöld's work and reform our multilateral institutions so they are fit to pursue peace in a changing world. A uh, number of you have asked me uh, for a reaction to what happened at, um, in Gaza at Al-Mawasi um, Al camp, and I can tell you that the Secretary General is deeply alarmed by the continued loss of life in Gaza. He strongly condemns today's Israeli airstrike in an Israeli-designated zone for displaced persons in Khan Yunis. The use of heavy weapons in densely populated areas is unconscionable. Palestinians had moved to this area in Khan Yunis in search for shelter, in search of safety, after being repeatedly instructed to do so by the Israeli authorities themselves. As the Secretary General has repeatedly said, there is no safe place in Gaza. He repeats yet again his call for an immediate ceasefire and for the immediate and unconditional of all Israeli hostages and others and nationalities still being held in Gaza. And earlier today, Tor Venisland, our special coordinator uh, for the Middle East peace process, in his own statement, strongly condemned uh, the attack. He said that international humanitarian law, including the principles of distinction, proportionality and precaution in attack must be upheld at all times. He also emphasized that civilians must never be used as human shields. Further to the attack on Al-Mawasi, the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs uh, led an assessment team to the area today to identify the most urgent needs of the population and to mobilize efforts to meet those needs. Um, UNICEF, the, World, uh, the Food and Agriculture Organizations, and other partners took part in the mission, which distributed shelter materials and non-food items, repaired water infrastructure, and provided protection support. OCHA warns that aid workers in Gaza continue to face daily threats to their safety and ongoing obstruction to their efforts to reach Palestinians in need of life-saving assistance. Yesterday's uh, incident involving a UN convoy stopped by Israeli forces is the latest example of the unacceptable dangers and impediment that humanitarian personnel in Gaza are experiencing. The convoy was carrying 12 staff members on their way to support the polio vaccination campaign in northern Gaza. Its movements were fully coordinated with Israeli forces and all details provided ahead of time. When the team was stopped at the al-Rashid checkpoint, they were informed that Israeli forces wanted to hold two UN staff members in the convoy for questioning. The situation escalated very quickly, with soldiers pointing their weapons directly towards our personnel in the convoy. The UN vehicles were encircled by Israeli forces and shots were fired. The convoy was then approached by IDF tanks and a bulldozer, which proceeded to ram the UN vehicles from the front and from the back, uh, compacting the convoy with the UN staff inside. One bulldozer dropped debris on the first vehicle while Israeli soldiers threatened staff, making it impossible for them to safely exit the vehicles. The convoy remained at gunpoint as senior UN officials engaged with Israeli authorities in an effort to de-escalate the situation. The two staff members were interrogated by Israeli forces and then released back to us. Uh, after seven and a half hours at the checkpoint, the convoy returned to base after being unable to complete its humanitarian mission, but all personnel came back. This incident and the conduct of Israeli forces on the ground put the lives of our staff in danger. It is critical that Israeli forces take measures to protect humanitarian staff and assets and to facilitate their work. This is what international humanitarian law requires. Despite this incident, um, our partners uh, were able to start the polio vaccination campaign in northern Gaza today. This is the third phase of the campaign and is expected to continue through Thursday. UNRWA says thousands of children in north Gaza have been vaccinated so far. We hope to have the uh, more details 
later or tomorrow. Uh, the World Health Organization uh, says vaccines, cold chain equipment, and finger markers, which are used to track who's actually been vaccinated, were successfully delivered to North Gaza yesterday. Uh, Dr. Tedros, the head of WHO, said that work is ongoing to deliver more fuel to ensure the vehicles used by vaccination teams remain functional and to resupply hospitals so that they can maintain essential services. Uh, turning to Lebanon, our special coordinator for Lebanon, Janine Hennis uh, Plaschert, is continuing her engagement with Lebanese and Israeli officials, as well as regional and international actors, to push for an immediate return to a cessation of hostilities along the Blue Line. She continued to warn of the risks of miscalculation as the exchange of fire between Israel and Hezbollah persisted for 11th month. Earlier in the week, the special coordinator, along with ambassadors of the UN Security Councils, member states, and the European Union, met in Beirut with Lebanon's caretaker prime minister, Najib Nikati, to discuss the situation in southern Lebanon and the need to restore calm, stability, as envisaged, envisaged in Security Council Resolution 1701. Meanwhile, on the humanitarian front, our colleagues are telling us that the humanitarian impact of the ongoing hostilities along the Blue Line is massive. These hostilities are primarily impacted civilians on both sides of the Blue Line, as well as critical infrastructure. Over the weekend, three Lebanese civil defense volunteers were killed in an Israeli airstrike. This is a tragic reminder of the immense risk faced by frontline responders. We're again urging all parties to fully uphold their obligations under international humanitarian law to protect civilians as well as civilian infrastructure. Uh, hostilities have driven civilians on both sides of the blue line away from their homes and their livelihoods and their schools for months. Um, um, turning to Libya, on the third day of her visit to Libya, the Under Secretary General for Political and Peacebuilding Affairs, Rosemary De Carlo, held productive meetings with the Chairman of the High National Election Commission, representatives of the High State Council, political party associations, and civil society organizations, including women and youth groups. In all her discussions, uh, Under Secretary General Di Carlo emphasized the urgency of an inclusive political process leading to parliamentary and presidential elections. She underscored that elections remain the only way to break the political stalemate and uh, the only way to restore the legitimacy of Libya's political institutions. In this regard, she reiterated the unwavering commitment of the United Nations to support Libya and the Libyan people in achieving these objectives. Meanwhile, also in Libya today marks one year since the devastating floods killed and displaced thousands of people in the northeast of the country. The Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs estimated that about 884,000 people uh, across five provinces were living in areas that were directly impacted by Storm Daniel. The storm brought torrential rains and flash floods that killed more than 4,000 people and displaced some 43,000 others. With the emergency uh, response phase almost completed, efforts are now focused on providing recovery and reconstruction support to some and some longer-term support. And just moving to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, um, the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian uh, Affairs says that ongoing MPOX outbreak has now spread to 23 of the country's 26 provinces, impacting people already facing dire humanitarian situation. As of yesterday, health officials in the country have reported more than 20,000 suspected cases with 5,050 confirmed cases and more than 690 deaths. The government is leading the response and has launched a $193 million national MPOX response plan. The priorities include um, disease surveillance and tracing, vaccination, improved lab capacity, as well as uh, health preparedness. We and our partners are preparing to assist with vaccine distribution and ensure the most vulnerable are, um, uh, most vulnerable are reached to help stop the virus's spread. 23 confirmed cases have been reported in at least six displacement camps around Goma in North Kivu province, host, and those camps uh, hosting about 130,000 vulnerable people. 
Humanitarian organizations are concerned about overcrowded displacement camps in the east of the country as inadequate access to water, sanitation increase the risk of contamination. We urge the international community to come together and provide the necessary funding to mount an urgent and robust response to this crisis. Also, staying in the DRC, our peacekeeping colleagues report that earlier this week, a peacekeeping mission and the UN Mine Action Service conducted the first of a series of trainings for 60 members of the Congolese Armed Forces in explosive threat assessments that took place in South Kivu and Bukavu. The training is part of the mission's efforts to support Congolese soldiers with essential skills to effectively detect and manage improvised explosive devices thus limiting illegal armed groups and logistical capacity and freedom of movement. Additionally, Peacekeeping Mission today launched an 11-day training program in Beni, in North Kivu, for national police officers that focuses on investigation techniques related to terrorism, violent extremism, and prison radicalization. And as you may have seen, Vietnam was hit over the weekend by Typhoon Yagi, the most powerful storm in the South China Seas in three decades. The storm's impact was most severe in Vietnam's northern province, where it damaged thousands of houses and flooded hundreds of thousands of hectares of crops, uh, including rice crops. The government is leading the response and has evacuated 50,000 people from flood areas and zones prone to landslides and relocated them to safer areas. Following the request of the, uh, for international support, we are coordinating with the government on relief efforts. Priority includes food, water, sanitation, and cash for repair sh to repair shelters. Field assessments are ongoing, uh, and we will update you with more. Tomorrow at 10.30 in this very room, the Under Secretary General for Policy and head of the, and, um, head of the UN S Summit of the Future, Guy Ryder, will be here to brief you on the program and the objectives of the summit. As you know, the summit will take place at UN headquarters on the 22nd and 23rd. Then at 1 p.m., there'll be a briefing by the co-chairs of the Secretary General's panel on critical energy transition minerals, and that's uh, Ambassador Mxato um, Diseko of South Africa and Director General Dite Yul Jorgensen of the European Commission. They'll be here to brief you on the panel's uh, report and their work, which they will have presented uh, to the Secretary General uh, uh, just a bit uh, earlier. Edi. Thank you, Steph. Um, on this incident with the convoy, what kind of clearances did they have, and has the UN um, protested to the Israeli? Uh, yes, on your second question. I mean, we've, we've protested. We were in touch with uh, as many, I think, Israeli officials that we could get on the phone with yesterday during the, the more than seven hours this was going on. As I said, this had been cleared, uh, this had been cleared along the existing, uh, this had been cleared through the existing procedures that we use every day uh, with the Israeli security forces to make sure our convoys uh, have been, um, are cleared. I mean, we, we think we have enough experience in that area not to show up unannounced uh, at a checkpoint. And just a, a quick uh, follow-up. Um, what did the Israelis on the ground keep telling the UN drivers and staff? What do you mean, what do they keep saying? Well, if they had clearances, what was the objection? I, you know, it. listen, I can't, it, it's... I can't, we can't analyze where the breakdown in communications uh, uh, were. We can't analyze why this system didn't work at this point because we did everything we were supposed to do. So I think that's a question to ask the Israelis. Michelle, then Benno. Thank you, Steph. Um, just uh, a follow up on that. Um, you said there was the two staff members who were taken out and questioned. Mm -hmm. while the rest of the convoy remained there. Do we know what they were questioned about? Uh, they were national staff members, uh, but we made sure that uh, they, were question they were questioned in front of the vehicles and in front of UN personnel. Uh, but we don't know what about? No. 
And uh, has this has this impacted any UN operations in Gaza in any in any well, way? I mean, it, you know, the polio vaccination campaign went ahead today. Uh, these people were part of the support for the polio vaccination campaign, uh, but they weren't carrying vaccines or you know they. Uh, these campaigns take a lot of people, um, but so the particular tasks that they were supposed to do weren't done, and they were put in great uh, danger. And one can only assume the, the tension uh, that they were uh, under. But the polio vaccination, as I said, did go did go through. And sorry, just two very quick ones. Um, you said they were shot at. Did, were any of the vehicles hit? Uh, the vehicles were not damaged in a way that they could not be driven back. And how? Uh senior was the most sort of senior UN person in the convoy? I don't know. Uh, Benno? Michelle asked all my questions, so. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Amelie, then Benny. Uh, just follow up still on the same uh, incident. Uh, the the vehicle was clearly uh, UN marked, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, okay, just to be sure. Yeah. And. For those of us who are not still not familiar with the names of the lo 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 location, where is this checkpoint? This was the checkpoint f um, uh, furthest to the west uh, around Wadi Gaza. Okay. okay. And um, from the last incident with the WFP um, vehicle which was fired on, uh, has WFP resumed all its uh, movement since then, since they had uh, I stopped it? I believe they have. I believe they have. Okay. Uh, Benny? Two questions, actually, on two separate incidents. Uh, first on uh, that incident, uh, the IDF obviously said in initially at least that uh, they were that the people they they were uh, interrogating were suspected Hamas people. Do you know for a fact that they weren't? That they were what? Hamas. Uh, no, they were they were UN staff. They were spoken to, and uh, the Israeli security but, forces spoke spoke to them, uh, and they were released. And they went back with the UN, uh, but it took a long time because we did not want to lose eyeballs on our colleagues. Gotcha. Uh, and on the second incident that uh, Tor Rosland was uh, talking about today, um, Hamas initially said there were 40 people killed, then the Hamas um, uh, the health ministry officially said that there were 14, 18, I think they said, the, the new number. Um, Israel says that they targeted uh, and they named four Hamas uh, t uh, top commanders. Uh, why the condemnation if, if, it, if it was uh, the people who are uh, combatants that are hiding among civilians? Well, I would encourage you to read all of, all of Tor's statement. Right. I read, I but it starts with it starts with uh, uh, th th uh, it, strongly condemn the Israeli the, the, action. The killing of whether you are talking about eighteen, whether you're talking about forty people. Uh, no, no, I'm not uh, talking about no, eighteen. I'm, okay. I'm saying that I, that's I mean, what if you were, if you were, if you were, if you, international law is clear on the need to protect uh, civilians, and I think we've been very clear on uh, on calling out and condemning uh, the killings of civilians. We've been very clear on calling out and condemning the use of, of, of people using um, health uh, and other infrastructure uh, as a zone of combat. So, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to, I don't feel I need to explain anything more than what we said on behalf of the SG before you came in you're and the full, towards full statement. Yeah, you're saying civilians. You know for a fact that whatever number there is of casualties, that they were civilians? We know for a fact that the, there were a lot of civilians who were killed in that attack. Uh, Deji. Yes, also on the incident of the UN convoy, you said seven and a half hours, right? Mm -hmm. Is that convoy belong to UNRWA? It was, it was interagency. There was UNRWA and other agencies in there. Okay, you mentioned that there's a high-ranking official uh, talking to communicate to Israel uh, authorities. Is that on site or? Uh, no, what I said is that uh, this was a, 
This was hap we were being briefed on this as it was happening in real time yesterday, and I think a number of you uh, were in touch with us. Uh, to say that we were extremely concerned and nervous about the fate of our colleagues would be a huge understatement, right? So there are procedures in place. We felt we followed those procedures, right? There was clearly a breakdown on the other side, right? Um, so what happens in these cases uh, is that we try to reach senior people on the Israeli end for them to get the message to the platoon and the soldiers on the ground to let our people go. So, Amelie just asked the last incident, the WFPI inc yeah. incident. I remember asking you, do you expect any explanations from Israeli authority? Do you have the explanation now for that incident? I'm not incident? aware that we have any explanation. That's like four weeks, three weeks ago, right? You, I, I, you, you still didn't not, have I mean, the, you should ask WFP. I'm not aware that we've gotten any satisfactory answer. Okay, one last, one last thing about the polio campaign in the North Ga northern mm -hmm. Gaza. You didn't really uh, mention that much about the, the campaign now uh, since of the impact of this incident. Well, a couple of things. First, do, do you have the pause in the northern Gaza during the campaign? Second, do you cons uh, has, has the UN or... or WHO considered even longer time and extension of timing of the campaign in the north. Uh, we are getting the pauses that we need for the. I mean, the, the 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 very localized and limited pauses are happening. Otherwise, the campaign wouldn't go uh, wouldn't go forward. Your question about whether you need to extend it is not a question I can answer from here. I think our colleagues on the ground will make that assessment. Uh, I mean, I think they were reaching the targets they wanted to reach in terms of, uh, of vaccination. Um, so, but obviously, the, we will get more details as we go, uh, as we go along. Uh, Gabriel. Thank you, Steph. Um, the Israeli government said, admitted to uh, killing the Turkish-American uh, activist in the occupied West Bank. The Israelis say it was unintentional. Does the Secretary General feel that the Israeli government is a proper agency to be investigating itself in situations such as this? Well, let's see what the full investigation says. I think we, we, uh, we condemned uh, clearly the killing of, uh, of this young woman, and people will need to be held accountable. In May, in May an international UN staff member, as you remember, was killed. Uh, did the, has, he, has Israel provided any information on that alleged investigation that they're conducting? On, on the, the one who was in the DSS? Uh, yeah, correct. Yes, we've gotten some information on that. And what about the more than 200 other uh, UNRWA staff members that uh, have been on killed? On that, I don't think we've made any serious progress. Uh, no. Uh, Sylviane. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, on the Israeli-Lebanon border, is there a possible new resolution for southern Lebanon that could be go beyond the resolution 1701, especially if it involves new arrangement on both sides of the border? Well, it's not, you know, before we start to speak about new resolutions, let, let's implement the ones that are already on the books. Uh, 1701 is very clear. Uh, have we, has it been fully implemented? The answer is clearly no, and I think the Secretary General has been very clear on that uh, as, as we go along. Uh, Sinan. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, I have a question about Syria. Um, UN Syria Commission of Inquiry launched its latest report today, and the Commission warned that the fighting has intensified along multiple front lines of Syrian conflict with the region gripped by fear of large scale. Basically, the report says if you go to the south, you see uh, Israeli airstrikes. If you go to central and northwest Syria, you see the, the, the regime and some uh, other groups torturing and killing civilians. And northeast Syria, you see Turkish airstrikes. So basically, they see this new wave of hostility unlawful. And I wonder if you have a comment on that. And how important is this report to Secretary General? I, I think the report offers a very clear and sobering kind of bird's eye view of the situation in Syria. Uh, obviously, it's independent from, from the Secretariat. But, uh, you know, we, I think we, we tend to update people here about Syria, I mean, on this, from this podium, in sort of piecemeal factors of what's going on in different areas. I think this provides a very useful 
overview of the way men, women, and sh children in Syria who just want to live in peace continue in most parts of the country, in many parts of the country, uh, to suffer uh, from conflict and suffer from the fact that parties involved are fully disregarding uh, international humanitarian law. It to some. Um, uh, first follow up on the, um, uh, the attack on uh, uh, Khan Yunis. Um, uh, so, and regarding the claim of the Israeli army that uh, Hamas uh, militant were operating in that um, area, can the UN independently verify that claim, whether it's true Sorry, or not? Sorry, which claim? The, the claim of the Israeli army that Hamas uh, was operating, fighters were operating in that area? I don't think we have the, 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 capacity, uh, the capacity to do so, uh, nor do we have the mandate to do so. Our focus in Gaza is on, uh, is on uh, helping civilians survive this conflict until a political solution can be found. But we have been very clear in denouncing when our premises are misused, uh, when, our, when we've had convoys uh, looted, and when we've seen civilians killed. On um, a, a follow up on the issue of um, armed delivery, given the, uh, the fact of, uh, that we have more than 40,000 Palestinians who were killed uh, since the beginning, uh, in one year, and, it's, and the number of injured, Etc. Does the Secretary General believe that countries who are delivering weapons to Israel should uh, stop that delivery? I think what we've, this question has come up before. What I've said is that any country that sells weapons to another country has an obligation to make sure that those weapons are not used in violations of international law. And, and do, con sorry, uh, uh, do you believe that countries are um, doing what they need to do? I mean, are they going? Not likely. Uh, Yvette, then Sarifa, and then Benno. Yvonne, Yv Yvonne I'm sorry, Yvette, Yvonne. It's, it's all French to me, Yvette, Yvonne. <laughs> it's quite a departure, isn't it? Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, just back to the incident involving the two UN uh, staff members, national staff members. You didn't give any details on the line of questioning over those seven and a half hours, but you no, said... No, they, they weren't questioned for over seven and a half hours. The incident... The, the, the incident took seven and a half hours. Okay, how long I, the I don't know how don't long know. the... Okay, the, the, but you the, haven't given any details on the line of questioning. No. Right, can you? Not, not especially, but I think it's pretty obvious, and you should probably ask the Israelis what they were asking. Okay, do you see this as a deliberate campaign of harassment of UN personnel? Look, what I see, it, the way we see it is that the, the, the system isn't working as it should, right? I don't, as I said before, we did our part, we follow the procedures of the notification system. Um, it clearly was not followed on, on the other side. Uh, the information did not go down to where it should have been, and it was not handled uh, properly. Um, this isn't the first incident, uh, but we've also had convoys that worked, that went through, that the notification system worked. I mean, we got the the fridges and the, the vaccines into, into northern Gaza. So, and, and we update you regularly on the percentage of convoys that make it in and those that are stopped for, for whatever reason. We just need the system to work better. Yesterday could have turned out tragically. It just was stressful. It took a long time. But thank God everybody got back safely. But it doesn't take much imagination to think that this could have turned out very differently. And I do have another question on a completely separate topic, mm -hmm. if that's okay. So when the Secretary General was in China last week, he may have seen that a Taiwanese national was sentenced to nine years in prison for his, on separatist uh, charges. I don't know if he's aware of that. Uh, one of the charges uh, that he was sentenced on was campaigning to join the United Nations. Does the Secretary General think that people should go to jail for a desire to join the United Nations? We, we believe that people should not go to jail for what they say or what they're thinking. Uh, Sirife, then Benno. 
Thank you, Steph. I want to go back to the killing of the Turkish American citizen Aisha Nur Ezge Egi. I was the one who asked you last week about right. the killing of Aisha Nur, and I specifically asked you whether you condemn this um, attack, and you said that you need to gather more information uh, before you can speak about it. So I want to know, have you gathered more information? Um, well, I, I, I just spoke about it. I mean, the reason I didn't answer the question when you asked for it because I had not yet heard of that particular incident. So now you... Well, I, mean, I, I answered, I think, I, the question was asked. Yes, the question was ago. asked, but I'm just trying to tell you that you said you condemned it, but you did not condemn it. I'm just trying to... I just, well, I, I'm condemning it. You're condemning okay. it now. Okay, okay. thank you. So um, the IDF, as Gabriel has said, said that it was unintentional. Um, do you think this is acceptable? And how do you evaluate the general increase of violence in the West Bank uh, where there's no Hamas, who the IDF says that they're trying to eliminate. Thank you. Well, I think I would ask you to, I would refer you back to what we've said in the last few weeks about the increase of violence in the, in the West Bank uh, and also our call on uh, Israeli authorities to abide by international law, notably in uh, law enforcement operations. Benno. Thank you, Steph. Um, <clears throat> now I, I do actually have a follow-up to the convoy. I think Michelle asked uh, about the shots that were fired. Uh -huh. And when I read the transcript, it said, like, um, n you just say, said something like the cars could, could, could drive afterwards or so. So I don't really understand. Shots were fired where they, they, to? I mean, you could, I mean l l let's, you can shoot at a vehicle without disabling the vehicle. Okay, so right. shots were fired at the vehicle, right, not in the air shot, or whatever. Yeah, shots, shots had fired, at the, some shots were fired in the air. They, the shots that were fired at the vehicle were, the way we interpret it, more warning shots. They were not uh, shot directly at windows and people. I don't know if you can see what I'm... Yeah, yeah. I, I guess so. It would help to get the photos if you have them. Um, also, another question. Will you or have you turned to other countries with influence in the region to advocate on behalf of you and personal so these situations... <laughs> don't happen every other uh, week. We, we, we have, we continue, and I think you heard, I mean, just to, to mention a very public statement recently, I think you heard uh, the Deputy U.S. Ambassador, Robert Wood, give a very clear uh, call for the protection of U.N. staff. Just really quickly, th no, to clarify. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, just to clarify. Michelle, that, please. They, it's a really quick one. They were yeah, like you, like you had earlier. Like, yeah, go ahead. They were armored vehicles? What? They were yes, armored? Yes, they were, as far as I know, okay. they were armored vehicles. Uh, Gabriel, would you like to ask a question? No or Michelle asked it for you. It's okay, we're, yeah. we're all, one, one, all colleagues here. Uh, Steph, it seems like, given that this is the second convoy in, what, two weeks that has been shot at, uh, you say the system isn't working, uh, we can, you can, this SG condemns the, the attack on Al-Mawasi, how many condemnations of how many attacks of so-called safe zones have we heard? It seems like this would be a good time for the Secretary General to be able to pick up the phone and call Benjamin Netanyahu. What, that is still not happening. I know That's what you're going to say. You're yeah. going to say that his, you have people that are talking to, to his people at different levels. But come on, sir. I mean, we're... I, I, I'm not... We, the, the situation has not changed. The, the Prime Minister, we reached out to the Prime Minister's office. They are aware of our request for a call. I think it's a question you can ask them. But we've had Sigrid Kog met with the, the Prime Minister, I think, last week. Uh, so we've had, uh, we've had communications. Okay. Uh, I will leave you uh, with our guest from uh, WFP, who will brief you on her recent trip to Ukraine. And I will leave you in Fahan's good hands.